Welcome to Diner Dogs and Catering. This is Richard, and I'm the big fat guy there slinging dogs in the video. I appreciate you giving me a listen. Uh, this video is working an event. Uh, if you checked out my last video, it was set up start to finish. Hot dog cart and lemonade stand set up start to finish. And uh, that should be available there on my channel. Um, this one gives you a little bit more action now I apologize already for the camera angle just like uh, probably you felt about the other video <clears throat> not ideal you know I, I put my customers first and the business first um, sometimes the camera can be a little intimidating or it can also be in the way and it's easy to uh, tip over um, as you see we're on grass here so what this is this event is a trunk or treat so um, the park like area you see is the green belt in the little town I live in and it goes for I don't even know if it's a mile uh, it might be a mile but it's right by a little river or a little creek called Indian Creek um, it's on the other side of that path those people are are walking on the left um, there's that little creek and you can see the rocks it's actually dry it's October uh, 29th I believe when this video was shot um, we uh, we were we could have done a few of those a couple of those trunk or treats we could have done one on Halloween day this is a Friday I believe I'd have to look at the calendar but I believe it was a Friday October 29th and our last day regardless is always the 31st unless you know it's a Saturday which hit uh, which in this case we only went to the 30th because that was a Saturday um, Sunday I believe was Halloween and we didn't go out Sunday we were done um, so in this scenario we generally work in the daytime this is an evening um, event obviously trunk or treat and we we're gonna close down here clean everything up get all reset and be back to work and set up at our normal tractor supply event which you've probably seen in our other video or I hope you'll look at our other videos um, but uh, so so that's a lot of work for us to be doing and normally it's just me and my wife um my wife kelly back there and the little blonde um she's she did a really good job at this event a lot of um a lot of pressure on her because i had her doing all my setups um and that's my daughter-in-law there and she was just basically she don't typically work for us that that might have even been the first time um, she ever did work for us and she did a fantastic job as well but uh, she was just taking the money um, I have to have the, the video actually muted um, because to the left outside of the camera shot is a little trailer and between the trailer and my hot dog cart on the ground is a very loud generator which was pretty disappointing the way things got set up um, 
anyway, you know, you do what you do and you go with the flow. But uh, it was kind of just a happenstance that uh, it worked out that way. I think it could have been avoided and it'll be avoided in the future. But uh, I didn't blame the other vendor. I, I These things just work the way they do. And we have so much to do, as you've seen in our video, previous video, if you've checked that out. Uh, just to get set up that uh, I didn't have time to worry about it um, the the grass there where we're at um, so I was I was talking about the, the camera angle uh, the camera is actually sitting in the back of my pickup on a tripod and uh, so I had to go and start that up and like I say I could hear the the uh, generator and i didn't know if i'd ever use this video i just it was a last minute thought to even to even tape this one so um but i thought you know what at least we're doing some food here and uh uh i was going to shoot the video even if it was for my own my own viewing and to see what we could have done better because you'll always find and I, you know it's not a bad idea i don't know if that i would call this a tip but it's not a bad idea to videotape. Uh, you know, grab your phone, get a cheap $15 tripod if you can, or you don't even need, you know, if you can lean it up against something, whatever. Um, there are tripods that you can kind of hook, like if, like above me in the um, in the uh, the canopy there to look down, so then you could actually see yourself working. But uh, videotaping yourself, even if you're not going to do any videos or this ain't your bag, it's not a bad idea to do that just to uh, to watch yourself work, see what you're doing right, see what you're doing wrong. One thing you might notice is we don't have the lemonade uh, stand set up. Again, this is October 29th. It's quite cool. Um, you see, I've got a long sleeve shirt underneath my uh, my diner dog shirt there. Um, so, which, you know, it, it goes right in Idaho, it goes, you know, uh, right from season to season. There's not a big gap between uh, summer and uh, fall and not a big gap between fall and winter. And then, you know, sometimes it seems like there's a long, long spring, though. Sometimes it takes it a while to get kicked in. That's why I'm not even going to try to get started uh, until uh, June, I don't believe, this year. Anyhow, so that's about the camera angle. That's what's going on. It's trunk or treat. So um, behind me, you can't see, but or I should say f to my left from where I'm standing right there, that green belt, that pathway goes, again, probably a mile or so uh, along the, the little Indian Creek there. And in that direction is where a lot of the vehicles are set up um, different people with uh, trunks full of candy for the little kids you can see some along parked uh, backed up there to the green belt path uh, straight ahead you can see um, across the little path there uh, is uh, la -di da that's a coffee place they actually have a brick and mortar they do really well um, and uh, they have that trailer, and they recently got one in another town that uh, her daughter runs. So they're a very uh, respected, plugged-in business here in our little town. And and so uh, I was kind of, when I could smell that coffee brew, and I was wanting a cup myself. But we, uh, we stayed real busy um, just getting started there. Um, nice thing is, is uh, you see I'm waving at somebody. I have no idea who, but, you know, we've done this 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 is the end of our third season and we have made so many friends in our little town i'll tell you that's the that's uh, worth the ticket price right there because you know once you get plugged into your community a little bit better once you start knowing those faces and they start knowing you you know it it, it uh you know it, it becomes more than just about out making money we get invited to a lot of events you know and people wanting us to be a part of their lives and and vice versa i don't want to oversell it but i'm telling you we really enjoy uh, our customers and the community we've built just just through doing this business um by the way talking about business i do have some bonus content here coming up i'm gonna well, or a tip, I'm going to I'm gonna throw you, um, I, I explained we don't have the lemonade stand. It's too cold for lemonade. Um, also, we don't have the manpower. Uh, I didn't know the setup, how level we would be able to be at this event, um, which, as you can see, is not level at all. 
Um, we are selling uh, the hot dogs. Um, we're also, as you see, those big old hamburger buns. Usually I used a different bun, but this time I decided to use these great big hamburger buns that worked out real well for our pulled pork sandwiches. And it's a slow, sm slow smoked pulled pork we offer. Um, and I smoked that myself. And uh, we'll put a put a little coleslaw on top and whatever sauce people want. Usually we, we opt for a, a mayo or or barbecue sauce. I, I use a really high quality uh, barbecue sauce. Little stuff like that makes a difference. I always think it's the little stuff because there's a barbecue outfit right here in the town we live in. And, uh, you know, so I know I don't want to serve them anything less than what they might expect somewhere else. So I, I do my best to give them a, a hearty serving of the pork um, on each sandwich. I did trim my menu down on this event. Um, don't know if this interests you at all, but typically I have a my diner dog, which is a 10-inch Nathan's All Beef. I serve that on a uh, Bake Refresh bun. You can see there behind my daughter-in-law, Rachel, there's that stack of, uh, of bread, those uh, bread trays. That's my Bake Refresh bread, and they're an 8-inch Bake Refresh uh, hot dog bun, and a 10-inch diner dog goes on those. Well, when I'm doing something like pulled pork along with hot dogs and the different dogs I do, I need the extra help. So Kelly's doing all my setups, um, especially with those with that pulled pork, and we're boxing them up for people so they have something to eat, or if they want to just take them take them home or whatever they want to do. Um, but I changed my menu a little bit. Uh, I have the diner dog, and usually I sell a puppy dog, which is a a smaller diner dog. It's still a Nathan's, but it's a Nathan's eight to one on a smaller regular sized hot dog bun. Also baked refresh, but uh, it's just a smaller size. See there, I'm grabbing some bread. Um, and sometimes that's a real hassle to have the two size dogs. Um, and especially when you have the pulled pork. So what I did, this was, I, 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 I uh, had started to offer what I call a naked dog, and it's actually printed on the menu. Um, that is a hot dog with no toppings, just condiments. So ketchup, mustard, mayo, um, a lot of kids, and, and actually it's a surprising number of people don't really care if they have toppings on their hot dog. It, it kind of blows my mind. Most of our customers do, and they, they're really particular about which toppings, whether they want grilled onions or fresh onions and all that. But, but uh, when it comes to the uh, kids' dogs, and just it, it, it surprises me the number of people, uh, teenagers we get to, at our truck supply. We during school we usually have uh, a group of girls that'll come over. None of them ever put a topping on on their hot dog. It's always ketchup, uh, mustard, that sort of thing. So we offer that for a, for a buck less. So basically a diner dog or for a dollar less, you can have the uh, naked dog. And we sold a ton of those during this event. Um, and uh, which was nice because that's much easier, saves them a little money. We can serve a little faster. Um, but uh, between getting set up and everything else and just trying to organize in this environment, you know, that that's a challenge trying to um, just get comfortable. We're used to our regular setup. So being at a different uh, type of environment, um, not even on level ground there and uh, serving a little bit different menu than we do day to day and having different roles, you know, with Kelly helping me and also trying to help Rachel to, to know what to do. Um, it, you know, there's quite a little bit to it. We also brought extra mac and cheese. We serve quite a bit of our mac and cheese. Um, and there's this thing we're ca I call a caveman, uh, our high school mascot. And here's a tip. Here's a free idea, um, if you haven't already thought of it. Um, our high school cave uh, high school mascot is the caveman, and or caveman. And uh, so I. I uh, have an entree called a caveman, and what that is is basically a form, a version of a, um, a walk, uh, well, uh, walking taco or Frito pie. People call them different things. We call them a pot belly um, with the Fritos, the chili, the onions, the, the uh, jalapenos, the, that sort of thing. Chili, that's a, we call that a, a pot belly. That's a, at least our name for it. Well, these uh, caveman are a version of that so those big boxes on my little uh, uh barbecue they're all hanging off 
to the right there. Those boxes, uh, what we make in those is the caveman. And what that is, is it's uh, the bottom, it starts with a bottom layer of mac and cheese. On top of the mac and cheese is two ounces of Fritos. So we always use the two ounce bags. Um, and, uh, I remember on this particular uh, event, we couldn't find we our our order for the uh, for the two ounce Fritos didn't come in, so we had to actually buy several big bags and break them down, weigh them and break them down. But uh, looks like something there in the video we're doing wrong. I don't know what we're messing up there. Maybe we got a ticket wrong. Who knows? But anyway, so I had to so I actually broke them down and put them in bags, and so I could have them pre weighed and ready. But <laughs> I didn't even have the actual. Um, two ounce bags I had to had to weigh them ourselves um, but uh, so you've got that box you've got a layer of mac and cheese homemade mac and cheese the two ounces of Fritos on top of that we put the uh, the chili and we use about four scoops of chili uh, it's not a big probably that's uh, three ounces probably roughly three something like that kind of eyeball that but we do try to watch our to, to our consistency um, to make them the same each time and then on top of that we have a chopped up uh, uh, hot dog uh, and usually we use the eight to ones Nathan's when we have those uh, we use those to, to top the on top of the chili and then cheese lots of cheese onions um, jalapenos and a lot of people like a drizzle of our uh, our special sauce that we sell so or that we offer so that's called a caveman and and we sell quite a few of those um, we also have the uh, you know the pot belly which is a smaller version of that with no hot dog no chili but or excuse me no hot dog and no uh, uh, mac uh, mac and cheese it's just the the chips the chili onions uh, jalapenos sauce that's and cheese that's uh, what we call a pot belly, which everybody else, most people call a walking taco or a uh, Frito pie. Anyway, so uh, there's that. You can see I got a big sandwich there. I was just setting them up and letting Kelly do the topping. We were offering some uh, pickles and uh, coleslaw and then whatever dressing um, barbecue a lot of people went for or, or uh, some people like prefer mayonnaise on them because they're already sauced. I use a hydrate, hydrating sauce in the pulled pork to to juice it up a little bit um to make sure it's not dry uh and uh, that works out really well so we're just getting kicking i'm gonna let this run but i want to go to another slide and uh, uh give you a little tip about the business uh like i say i don't have my my lemonade stand set up um but, but uh let's take a break from this for a bit and we'll go to the next slide here Okay, so this um, this tip won't be, or or this is what I'm going to share with you. I don't even know if you'd call it a tip, but what I want to share with you is my, my drinks and uh, something that I started doing this whole last year. I think I started it at the end of 2021, if I remember right. I don't remember for sure, but I think about that. But anyway, all last year, uh, I offered sweet tea. So... I think I told, I think, uh, you know, whether, I don't know if you've seen my other video, but, you know, I don't, I do not recommend doing lemonade if you're by yourself. If you don't have help and not going to have help to start out, well, get out there, sell hot dogs, sell soft drinks, you know, do what you can do, pound it out. Your life's going to be simpler um, and you won't have to pay somebody to help you. But to try to do it by yourself, I absolutely don't recommend that if you, you know, take it for what it's worth um don't tell anybody else how to dance but i don't recommend it it's too much to do it right um you know i've heard of people using minute made and mixes and stuff like that well you're not really even doing lemonade and you might i don't know why you would go to that trouble if you don't do it fresh squeeze so um you know i i don't know if i respect that that much you know if a person's making money you know or if you're doing an event and that's the way you got to do it whatever you know that that's up to you but um personally you either do fresh squeezed lemonade or you don't uh that's that's my two cents on it that's my opinion is all that is that's all it's worth um but i wanted to share my drink menu um 
we do do lemonade. So if you do lemonade, and this, this might work even if you don't do lemonade and you want some kind of an alternative, this might even work out to your favor a little better. You don't have the overhead of lemonade and all the work and the help it takes and the, just keeping up with ice is, a, is it can be, you know, that's a daily chore. Um, you can find ways to work it out, but it's still, you know, it adds to the labor and adds to, uh, to the whole overall uh, upkeep of your business. So as you see, I got my, my soft drinks I sell. These are just, you know, your regular uh, uh, 12 ounce cans of soda of uh, pop so pepsi diet pepsi there's my flavors um that little graphic on the left shows you my uh the percentage of sales i didn't put the actual numbers in but I, I, it's it's showing you the percentage of sales for each item um pepsi is the largest soft drink outside of lemonade i sell more lemonade than than any of this i sold just just i sold 2500 lemonades in 2022 actually 2495 so i was five short of uh of uh 2500 you know we charge five bucks a, a glass of lemonade six bucks for uh flavor um and uh we also have a couple of varieties i'll, I'll talk about so that's that's another tip for people that do do lemonade and follow us <clears throat> A uh, couple of ideas. Anything you see here, if you can use, take. There's no stealing in the vending business. You can emulate and make whatever here your own. Uh, I want you to succeed. I want you to kill it. I want you to make a living. Uh, if you're like me, you're trying to find some freedom, trying to find a, a new life. Um, and uh, that's just what I did, and that's what I want for you, too. So if you see anything on here that sparks ideas that, that you want to take, it's not stealing, it's not copying, it's just taking and making it your own. Um, that's what food is, you know. But uh, what I was going to say is this might even work out better. Um, if you can't do lemonade, but you'd still feel like you've got to do something. I started after offering sweet tea, uh, all, all this last 2022, I offered sweet tea. Um, and then in uh, uh, maybe a little in the end of 2021, I don't even remember. It doesn't matter. But <clears throat> as you can see, my, my outside of lemonade, my biggest uh, drink, because I don't consider lemonade in my soft drink sales, um, that's, a, that's its own category. Um, but Pepsi made up just the Pepsi brand or cola. Um, we only carry Pepsi products. Um, 25 percent of the sodas you know one in four sodas i sold was a pepsi okay um and you, you know another thing i'll mention here you don't have to have as many flavors you know you might do with four flavors you know i do recommend having a diet and one thing to keep in mind about diet is diet does expire and very soon after that expiration date or best buy date it starts to change flavor the quality depreciates very quickly don't overstock diet uh, soda i don't care if it's diet dr pepper diet pepsi whatever don't overstock it because that does go bad and it uh, and your customers will notice because uh, they drink it every day they know the flavor it's supposed to be they know they know it expires um be sure not to overstock it because you don't want to have to throw any out. But uh, back to the sales, one in four of the soft drinks I sold was a was a uh, Pepsi. And you can see the other breakdown of things. Uh, well, five percent, one in twenty, was a uh, was an Orange Crush, etc. Um, the uh, the thing I wanted to point out though is look look over there at that orange one, that sweet tea. 20%, one in five of the of the drinks I sold, and that, that, that includes all the drinks from bottled water all the way to sweet tea, uh, one, in one out of five was a sweet tea. And I sell sweet tea, Southern Style Sweet Tea, for $3, as you see there on my drink menu. Um, I use, and you can see that's a, that is a picture of our sweet tea. It's a, um, I don't always put our little sticker on it, but, uh, I think I did it cause I wanted a, a picture for a, a promo or something I was doing. So I still had this, this, uh, I had that, that, that image to share with you. Um, that's a glass of our sweet tea, 32 ounce cup. Um, you don't need a sticker on it. You don't need a label on it. Um, 32 ounce 
cup. Um, you need the ice and you need the sweet tea. You can make sweet tea. You know, there's places you'll find them that they actually sell grocery stores, sell empty gallon jugs, brand new empty gallon jugs, never been used. Um, if they don't, you can buy uh, water in a gallon jug because you're going to want the gallon jug to uh, to you know to use to to cart the sweet tea around. There's other ways to do it. I'm just telling you how I do it. You could you could get a tea dispenser, whatever you wanted to do. Uh, in my book, keep it simple. I have enough to worry about, so I just use the jugs. Um, and to make sweet tea, you know, you can email me if you want a recipe. But make if you're going to make it, make it right. You know, brew it. Um, uh, seep it for a long time and put the sugar right in the hot tea. Uh, there's a method to it to uh, watch, you know, how much uh, uh, bitterness is in it. There's different tricks. If you're down south, you already know how. Um, I'm in Idaho, so uh, having spent a lot of time in, in the south, I got addicted to sweet tea. I enjoy it myself, have it pretty regularly. Um, so I know how to make it myself. I back it up on just a slight on the sugar. I, t I back it down on just a little bit for Idaho because uh, they're not used to it quite as sweet here. But people love it. And, uh, you know, one in five of the drinks, one in five. That's just, that's pretty good sales when you consider it's $3. Now, what's nice is your profit on that, uh, on that sweet tea is going to be substantially more you know, more than three times, I'd have to do the math. I, I should have done it before I did this video, but the, you know, you've got your cup, you've got your ice, you know, so even if let's say half, let's just say, let's say it cost you a buck and a half for the cup, the straw, the lid, and the ice and the water, if you want to count that. Let's say that in the tea, because tea is very inexpensive. I use Lipton tea, works perfect. Um, I don't recommend getting fancy with it. Lipton tea works perfect. Uh, black tea. Um, the uh, but what I was going to say is you don't have to get fancy with it, but serve a really good tea. And if you figure out of that three dollars, I say, and you could sell it for four. I don't care what you sell it for. You could sell it for four in the right circumstance. You could sell it for five. Um, when you look at what people pay for an iced coffee, you know. Kind of let you know you be the judge, but you want to have a reasonable price. Um, but let's say it was three dollars, and and you know I know the rule of of you know three times cost, which is a good rule of thumb. But for three bucks, it's kind of hard to resist a sweet tea in the uh, hot sun in the hot summertime. Um, be sure they know you you know make a sign. Be sure they know you have it. But it's a matter of having you know a chest full of ice. Uh, that you can use just for that drink and some cups and lids and you don't have the fresh the, the cost of lemon the you know the lemons or any of that to worry about um i'll tell you it's a pretty you know it's pre mixed the sugar's in it it's ready to go it's poured in the glass for, for you know you're going to make a if it was only half of three dollars you'd make a buck and a half for every one and when you consider what you make on a soda with the rising cost there, you know, you're going to make more on a sweet tea than you will on your soft drink. So I'm not saying everybody should run out and, and do this, but I wanted to share it uh, for people that know they can't add lemonade uh, because they don't have the manpower and resources to, to get that uh, deep into it on their own, you know, and have to work by themselves. If you know you're not going to do lemonade, but you feel like you want to raise the bar a little bit, it's something to put in the back pocket and think about uh, that you could do uh, sweet tea instead. Uh, uh, I don't, I, I, I'd never really seen anybody else doing it, but it just came up because I had, you know, the cup, I have the ice because I was already doing lemonade. And I finally come around to, why don't I just make my own sweet tea? And But make a good fresh one. And one thing too is use up whatever you, you know, uh, I will take if I if I have any uh, tea left over after it's made the same day, and then if I have some left over, uh, well, put it this way: tea don't last 36 hours. I don't, I won't. I'll dump it out or drink it myself, but I won't serve it after 36 hours. That's that's my rule. Um, tea can get a sourness to it 
rather quickly um, if it sets around and that sort of thing and and uh, also sunlight depreciates uh, depreciates it as well so if it's left out in the sun try to keep it you know in a chest or you know covered with a even a even a towel anything if you have a jug out because uh, you want to protect it from the sun um, just serve a good quality product but anyway moving on uh, another little thing that happened while we were we have a customer his name's jack wonderful older gentleman uh we love him to death he has you know been good support he brings his wife and they get a uh, hot dog pretty regularly probably once every week uh every other week at, at, at the, would be the longest uh, he don't come around but uh, during the season good guy but he has his own dream you know, we we've, we've always from day one offered lemonade but uh the first time he came up or one of his first visits he um, asked her to make one with Mountain Dew instead of uh, he just wanted it made with Mountain Dew so she took a Mountain Dew and you know charged him probably an extra buck and made him one with Mountain Dew and instead of water she just used the Mountain Dew um, and the lemon juice and uh, I think she did add half sugar instead of a whole the, the amount of sugar we normally use we don't use uh, simple syrup we use actual pure cane sugar there's tricks to doing that uh, to make sure it dissolves but uh, I'm, that's not what this video is about anyway the 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 thing is is we made one for him with the Mountain Dew I tried one out you know later I, I got to thinking about it hey what instead of water why don't I make a lemonade with Mountain Dew but I tried it and, and it was good it was okay Mountain Dew's awful sweet i like sweet tea but i don't i don't mountain dew isn't my thing it's it's okay on an occasion um it wasn't necessarily something i would uh, write home about but amazingly jack uh, orders that every time he, he wants one made with mountain dew and you know we always just charged him a, a, a buck up well after trying one myself i got to thinking well i love orange and you know people like the orange aid I didn't want to, you know, actually, it's a process to make real orange aid, and I didn't want to hassle with that, so I always offered the orange crush. So I made a lemonade with orange crush. Um, I do like it with half sugar, you know, so, when, you know, I don't eliminate the sugar. I don't just take the sugar from the orange crush. I, I still add half the amount of sugar we normally add to our uh, lemonade and use the uh, can of orange crush and the ice and the lemon and i'm telling you it was delicious uh and i they once people started catching on those go really well the other one i do is a black tea lemonade you'll find those at starbucks and places like that some of these coffee places um what that one is is the same thing instead of an arnold palmer where it's half and half it's you know half tea half lemonade we use all tea and and make lemonade from all tea um so it's that's why we call it a black tea lemonade instead of an all Ar arnold palmer um still there, that's a that's a that's you know we don't sell a ton but once you you know when you've got all the stuff why not you know um our flavors i know it's popular a lot of people uh that that only do lemonade or they're they're really picky they want to do their own flavoring so they they uh make their own you know use fresh strawberries and and process their own fruits and that sort of thing and that's all delicious and well and good we don't have the manpower time or resources for that kind of overhead and worry about that kind of waste and that sort of thing so we use uh, flavorings and it works real well we use uh, three squirts of flavor i don't know what the what the weight of that is but we use flavorings and uh that's funny because the whole first year we didn't offer flavors and most of the second year we were in business we didn't offer flavors and all of a sudden you know i'd been asked a couple of times and finally i think i started with just one flavor strawberry or whatever and uh before you knew it you know we we, we wouldn't ha you know we usually have about six flavors we offer and we'll bring out a special flavor once in a while as well um, but uh, anyway so there's some information the sweet tea that's a, a little tip or something to keep in your back pocket to think about um, the other thing I told you already was the caveman we have um, it, whether it be a certain particular hot dog a recipe um, with you know let's say fried onion or uh, 
potato sticks and uh, whatever, your own invention, whatever kind of hot dog or specialty dog, use your high school mascot uh, and name it that. And uh, it gives you something to draw attention and uh, let people know you're part of the community and it makes them, you know, uh, feel connected. So because people connect with the local school. So, you know, as far as marketing, that, that that works really well. People like to see, and I actually have the mascot and the, you know, the capital K and, and collegiate letters uh, on my sign. Um, that's, I don't know how, how valuable of a tip that is, but it's that's another idea. Uh, I even thought about naming my hot dog cart, uh, you know, something to do with the caveman, but uh, I, I went a different route with it. But uh, that was what I was thinking of uh well, you know, when I was still in the due diligence and planning stages. Anyway, let's move on. We'll watch just a few more minutes of the video if you'd like. Uh, I'm going to put that back on. This is a really long video. I'm not going to play uh, much more, but let's watch another five minutes or so. And uh, and again, I appreciate you for watching. Uh, maybe we'll throw some music on and you can just enjoy uh, watching it and I'll interject uh, if, uh, if, the, if it feels appropriate.